Welcome back, everybody, to yet another episode of the Standing Room Only podcast, episode number 98. We're inching closer to the century mark. We have just completed week nine in the NFL. We are officially over halfway of the season. Packers lost to the Chiefs. Jordan Love got his first start. We've had some uh, upsets this week, some major upsets, if you will. Uh, in the NBA, the Bulls are still who we thought they were. They're still hot. A lot of other teams, too, as well. Uh, Healy did go to the game. We will discuss what it was like going to his first game in years. Uh, and then we're going to end the episode talking a little bit about UFC 268. Um, that pay-per-view is awesome. Uh, as always, make sure you guys are following us on social media. We're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. We're on Twitter. Go ahead. It's SR Only Pod. Hit that follow button. Make sure you stay interactive with us. We like to stay interactive with you. You can follow our personal accounts. I'm iGoose with four O's. And then we have Healy as well. You follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Healy Six. So to start it off, let's talk about the NFL. I know that we just had an episode. I believe it was Friday. It's Tuesday of the following week. We're about halfway through the season. There's a few key things that I really, really wanted to talk about, at least for a couple of minutes, <clears throat> besides just our typical recap of scores, injuries, so on and so forth. First things first, the Bills lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars. It was 6-9. to nine. I've seen higher scoring in more than half of the baseball games all last season. What a game. And I, my biggest thing I kept questioning was, is this a sign of the Bills fa failing to properly game plan, or is it just the Jaguars are better than what their record is? I and think I it's... can't tell. I can't <laughs> tell. I'm going to go with the latter of just failing the game plan. And was it in Miami? Um, That game was in Jacksonville. It was Jacksonville and Buffalo. Or, yeah, Jacksonville. In Florida. I think I it's just one of those random road games, and the Bills just ended up losing. Yeah, it was... Um... It was a very interesting game. I didn't watch the whole game. I saw bits and pieces. I thought for sure that would be a lock. And all I kept seeing all weekend were memes about how everybody's parlays, everybody's locks were just not locks. Josh Allen threw for 264 passing yards, no touchdowns, which is like the first time in probably the whole season at least. Two interceptions. Um, Jacksonville went out there. Trevor Lawrence had a mediocre game, but I mean, then again, they only had field goals. It ended up being nine to six. Not major news, but it was just interesting to see the Bills go down. Uh, they're five and three, and the Patriots are right behind them at five and four. Uh, it's the, the AFC East is a very interesting division. Um, I thought the Bills were better than what the record was. I thought that was only their second loss. I had to do a double take at the standings. And there's some other surprise teams there, but the Bills and the Chiefs so far have proven to be beatable. They're beatable. They're they're human, um, despite the fact that the Chiefs did beat up on my Packers, but it was a close game there as well. This should have been a runaway game or like runaway season for the Bills with the AFC East. Patriots should not be in contention at all. I get that they're barely above 500. They have the Dolphins, and then they also have... Why am I blanking? The Jets. Well, the, the Jets are really yeah. bad as well. Like, yep. it, it shouldn't be this close. They did lose to the Titans. They've lost to the Jaguars. The Titans, they just keep eating these good teams. I yeah. don't really get it. <laughs> They're good. The Titans, We for the last couple of years, we've been seeing them in the playoffs. They've been competing. Defense declined a little bit. But they're they're showing up every Sunday, and they're making it tough for every single team. It's going to be interesting to see because we saw them sign Adrian Peterson. They brought a, uh, AD on or all day on all uh, for this past weekend, and he did pretty well. He scored a touchdown in his first game back in I don't know how long. And are they going to continue to be as good as they've been without Derrick Henry, who, a guy who gets 30 to 35 touches every single game? It's going to come down to is this going to be – all based on game plan. Are they going to start passing now? Is the run game still going to be great? Maybe it's just they just have a really good running running game. So it's it's going to be tough with the Titans because even though AP scored, 
He had 10 rushes for 21 yards. That's not good at all. It's not. It's not. And and generally, without with this team, they don't win football games. But what happened? They went out. They went out to L.A. against the Rams, who have been blazing hot. They just traded for Von Miller. And they they completely shut down that offense of the Rams. They held them to, I believe, under 100 yards rushing, held Matthew Stafford under 300 yards, picked him off twice. One was a questionable toss. Um, I mean, the offense of the Tennessee Titans did nothing, but that defense beat up the Rams. And that's how it's got to be the rest of the season because as, as much as we think Tannehill is good enough with the talent he has around him, A.J. Brown, Julio Jones, some of the other guys, without a run game, this team, to me, has no identity. They're, it, they're, they're one-dimensional. And I don't know how the Rams didn't exploit them. Actually, they technically did because they're, the, te- the Titans' offense didn't do it. It was their defense. And we're starting to see the Titans' defense that we saw a couple of years ago that, that really made it tough for a lot of teams. Another game that we could talk about is Jordan Love's first start, career start. He got, a, he got I believe he got too much flack for his first career start. Yeah, they. We're I playing think every in had, okay football. He he did. He went in and he did well. I can't. It's his first official start in Arrowhead Stadium, which is known to have a very, let's just say, it gives the Chiefs a true home field advantage every single game against a Chiefs team against Pat Mahomes, arguably one of the best quarterbacks, one of the best teams. Despite but struggling this year, they will always be favorited every week, as we talked about. I think Love did okay. I think Love managed for what his experience allows him to do. I think he showed good signs. I thought the touchdown to Lazard in the fourth quarter was perfectly set up. The ball was perfectly thrown as a little corner out to the sideline. There was two missed field goals. And as a result, they lost by six points. They, the Packers defense looked good considering that they are hurt and they did get some guys back. They did get Zadarius Smith back, which is huge for them to have the Smith bros on each end rushing the quarterback. It makes a huge difference when he's out there. Pat Mahomes still looked like Pat Mahomes of 2021 hasn't been explosive, but he made some good plays down the stretch. And even though Green Bay took the L and Jordan Love took the L. I think it was okay. I think it was it's an okay loss if you're Green Bay knowing you don't have Aaron Rodgers who just got fined for COVID violations along with the team 300,000. The whole different topic. But my takeaway as a fan of the team and an unbiased opinion is yeah, it's a loss but it was a well-played game, and it says a lot about the defense. And that's, that's been the important uh, aspect of Green Bay is no matter how well Rodgers does, every year in the playoffs, this defense gives up one or two huge plays, as we saw last year, Scotty Miller, halftime. And if they can continue to improve and keep games close in times when Aaron Rodgers is out, which shouldn't be often, They'll be okay. It was an okay game for Jordan Love. Moving forward, I am okay if he ends up taking over as a starter. Did you see where his mom got tickets to the game? The nosebleeds. The, the Chiefs literally gave her the last row possible, which I don't, I don't see how that happens. Even, a, yeah. even for the road team, I feel like they should get better seats than that. Or at least as if I was a pro player, I would find a way to put my mom in better seats. But who knows what the situation was. I think the best thing was, and actually I saw that on, it was like a sports center, social media page. Everybody was joking about it. Like, oh, she's in the nosebleeds. I was like, at least she's there. At least she's there to show support regardless of the situation. He knows she's there in person watching it. That's all that matters. Um, it is definitely interesting that she was in like the 
8,000 section of Arrowhead Stadium. But, yeah, that was really interesting. Because you can always just buy tickets. You can always just go on and buy from a reseller, but hey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Who, who knows about that? Other news, besides, obviously, some of the other games, Arizona beat the 49ers without Kyler Murray. And DeAndre Cleveland. Hopkins. And DeAndre Hopkins was out. I have them both on my fantasy team, two separate fantasy teams, but uh, it, was, it was a tough week about fantasy. I can't, it's a sensitive subject for me until the new week starts. Um, who was it? Oh, Cleveland looked great against Cincinnati. Not that Cincinnati's been a great football team, but they've been surprisingly good. And actually, I think moving forward, Cincinnati has a very high, uh, very high ceiling, a lot of upside in the next couple of years with just pure talent, running game, passing game, receivers, defense is okay. It's getting better, but Cleveland looked good all without Odell Beckham just cleared waivers. He was not picked up. He is officially a free agent, free to sign anywhere he wants. He said himself, he wants to play for a contender. If not, there's going to be problems. The, fir the first thing I, I, I thought of when I read that is, how can you go off and say there's going to be problems when you get an opportunity? What was your, what was your, your thoughts on that when you read that? Uh, it makes sense that he would sign with a contender because he was with the Browns. They aren't necessarily as much of a contender as we thought they were early on in the season. But if you're going to get your way out of a situation, you aren't going to go to a, a terrible situation. He's not trying to play for like the next big contract. He's trying to help out a team and win. So it kind of makes sense, even though his actions as of late – probably shouldn't make him probably isn't in the right to make these comments with how he has been acting though. Yeah. You know, I, I was, a, I'm a firm believer that it was, and we talked about it last week. Odell was just in a bad situation. I think he is better than what his numbers say. And I was wondering if he's pulling, not necessarily pulling. Cause I don't know if Antonio Brown did this on purpose to get where he's at. But almost pulling that string where it's like, let me just be a little dramatic and end up in the right situation. Because if he does play for a contender and say for some reason this contender wins the Super Bowl, he has that on his resume. Say he catches a few balls in the Super Bowl or with this team, he has that on his resume. They're like, oh, okay, maybe it was a bad situation in Cleveland. Look at what he just did. And now he goes from a one-year deal, which I assume he's going to sign with the contender, to now a three-year deal, making him a top-10 player again. It's very possible. I feel like you got to be very strategic. Considering his age, he's still young. He's a receiver. Receivers go for a little while. Minus his injuries. I think, there's, I think Odell, I think he lands. I think he goes to a contender. I'd be okay if he goes to Green Bay. But there's obviously other contenders he can go and play for. Seattle is a team, apparently, he's very interested in playing for. Russell Wilson is back this week against Green Bay. Sheesh. That'd be an interesting little pickup there. They'd have probably the best wide receiver wide receiving core next to Tampa Bay. I feel like the best situation for him would be Green Bay. I feel like him and Rodgers... Could work together and with having Devontae Adams alongside you it, he could just get separation or Adams would get separation and their offense would be moving quite a bit mm -hmm. I feel like you couldn't even run double team like you couldn't double team Adams as often as possible or if you did Odell's gonna beat somebody on a little cross route or a, uh, yeah. a little slant route over the middle and Rodgers would definitely not have a 35% non-catchable rate with Odell. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no, yeah, yeah. Not like Baker Mayfield. It, it's all going to come down to having too many superstars. I mean, and not too many superstars. Devontae Adams, to me, is like the most humbled guy. I, you never hear of him in the media. 
besides him and maybe like DeAndre Hopkins, those are two of the best receivers that are never really in the media besides answering questions, but they're always humbled. But this whole Rodgers thing, being in the media recently, that's the only thing I get worried about is will they clash? Will their personalities clash? And I feel like Green Bay, I feel like Rodgers, being around, I feel like being in a winning environment changes your attitude. Cleveland is a very, I feel like there's a lot of hecticness in Cleveland. Yeah, they're Mm. winning. They have a good run game. But I just feel like there's pieces all over, scattered everywhere. That like, it's just like throwing crap at a wall and something's going to stick. Yeah, You know, there's no structure there. Just like run, run, run. And then just we'll try to, you know, we'll try to throw the ball. And, you know, Peoples Jones is going to get a lot of opportunity in Cleveland, which shout out to him. But I'm, I'm very curious to see what happens with Odell. We might not see him get signed at all. I assume he will. And I assume yeah. it's going to be within the next couple of weeks. Um, but definitely, definitely going to uh, look to uh, see where he's a free agent and in what fantasy football league. Because just in case, just in case. Green Bay has the advantage because they're going to run away with the division. They're 7-2 and two right now. So there's no pressure on Odell having to perform every week. No pressure on the Packers to really perform. They have a bad game. Okay, they just brush it off. The next week happens. Aaron Rodgers also taking some of the flack at the moment, so you'd get the media coverage. And they're also in Green Bay, which is far away from everything else and not close to any major city at all. So (laughs) the news coverage not really going to be there yeah yeah and i think that's the big thing too uh it'll be good to go there but also for him it all depends where he wants to land if he wants to be in a major city chicago new york something like that green bay may not be the spot you're you're very far from a major metro metro populated city um but i think he would i think he would thrive there and i think that yeah like you said it would be the best opportunity you're guaranteed a playoff run Probably a first round buy. Your numbers would look good. Might not be good every week, but you're going to have great weeks. So let's go to Green Bay. Final little bit of NFL news. We're talking about the Bears. The Bears. If you guys are watching on the YouTube or just anywhere, I have a shirt that says embarrassing. Shout out to obvious shirts for this sh- for this one. Had to wear it. The Bears are on a four game skid. And I am just sick of Matt Nagy. They they lost a close game to the Steelers, but man, it's can Matt Nagy like officially be on the hot seat by the Bears? And can they just get rid of him? There's no way he's not on the hot seat. I think this was this was the trial. This is the final trial run, whatever you want to call it. They decided to keep everybody around they traded up to get the quarterback of their dreams because i mean realistically they just have never had a quarterback besides jay cutler nothing against him but the shirt wear it loud and proud healy because you and millions of other chicago fans i'm a chicago fan of all chicago teams except for the bears but nonetheless nonetheless i thought at some point, it was going to end up being a blowout. We we're seeing Fields out there scrambling, doing his thing, getting destroyed because he's young and doesn't know how to slide. We we're seeing horrible play calling. We we're seeing the Steelers get some crazy passes off downfield. The At Bears some... muffing a punt. Oh, that was horrible. And, and you know, I turned, I'm not going to lie, I turned the game off. The Bears had the final possession of the third quarter and they scored on that possession going into the fourth quarter and i got a notification that later in the fourth that they ended up taking the lead and obviously ultimately they ended up losing the game cairo santos missed a 65 yard field goal first miss in like 41 attempts shout out to him super cool super dope it's crazy that they have a defense that literally competes with the best offenses in the game Not saying the Steelers are the best, but just year in, year out. You have a kicker who does it, game in and game out. And you have an ass of a play caller 
And it's almost like it's so bad that I feel like Dalton would thrive more because he's so accustomed. He's been around longer. He can deal with horrible play calling. He He's a type of guy that would sit in the pocket and would work the five-yard passes. And they just should not. I, I don't know what else the Bears need at this point point other than getting rid of Matt Nagy and and pay every everybody 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 that contributes to a lackluster offense definitely with Andy Dalton or with Justin Fields though you want to get those sick throws that we saw like the one to Darnell Mooney there's one over the middle where he almost got sacked earlier in the game he like put it right on the money so i would still rather have fields out there because of these plays that he can make especially with his feet too like it doesn't matter what's happening with the play calling it's just not ever going to be good i mean they they this is a team that literally is in the middle of the pack defensively if not the top half of the pack the special teams is okay um who's who's their kick returner uh grant now it's jeremy grant and he there was one he brought out of the end zone only got it to the 15 and at at some point you got to tell him look i know we know you're one of the fastest in the game but you're not devin hester get you gotta they played i felt like they played the field position extremely well there was a point and you know what's pretty cool actually side note cole Komet. And Fields have this awesome connection so far the last couple of games, and I think that that's something to look look out for. Um, one play that stood out to me, not saying it was a difference maker, the Bears got the ball on a bad punt by Harvin from the Steelers. They ended up having, and it might have been the play that you just mentioned over the middle, I think it went to Cole Komet. It was like a 20-yard play. So they were in Steelers territory off one play. And then there was false start. There was illegal um, uh, formation or a man down field, illegal man down field or something. And it brought him back to the 40, 42 yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers. It was like third and 17 or something like that. And it's like the only play that in, in Justin Fields mind was go deep, go deep instead of playing the five, six yard ball and getting field goal range for Cairo Santos. And this was in the second quarter, I believe. And in my head, I was thinking, why wouldn't they pl- try to play small ball knowing the penalties are going against them, the offensive line is having troubles, they're not moving the ball very well, minus a few passes here and there to pretty much the tight end, Mooney here and there. And the run game was actually pretty solid too. There was a couple big plays. But again, is that is that play calling? Is that fields? I, I I feel like it all starts in practice. There's got to be a game scheme. There's got to be a scheme where it's like, hey, this is a game of chess, not checkers. I know it's the second quarter. I know we want you have a good arm. I know that we, we need to score a touchdown because we're already down 14-0, whatever it was at the time, 13-0. And they tried for the money ball instead of, a little five or six yard pass. He threw it 25 yards downfield, way overthrown. They had a punt. And even then, it was good field position. The Bears were playing the field position game, which they have to every single week because the offense is not that great. But just seeing something like as simple as getting in field goal range when they could, I feel like they could. Their offense isn't that bad. It's not horrible to where they can't just run a guaranteed four or five, six yard play. But they didn't do that. And not saying it made the difference, but that extra field goal would have made a big difference in the game. When I was driving home from the Bulls game yesterday, I was listening to it on the radio. Bears kicked that field goal to go up. I was like, I wonder how much time's left. And they're like, yeah, Bears have the lead, 145 remaining. We'll be right back. In my head. I was like, this is not good. Minute 45, the other team needs to get into field goal range. Knowing the Bears' defense history, I knew the game was over. The Bears, great defense. But 
Their pass game has always been just okay. And in when they play prevent defense, it's like one of the worst defenses I've ever seen. They allow every single five yard pass to be completed and teams just to run down the field and get in field goal. Range. Now let's say they had to score a touchdown. Oh, you're locked in. The bears are not going to allow a touchdown, but man, they can't stop a drive to save their life. Yeah, I think, um, and I, I don't know if it made a big difference. Eddie Jackson's out. Khalil Max out. A couple key guys. Eddie Jackson, I don't want to say he's been exposed, but he's just not the same Eddie Jackson that he was a couple of years ago. I know we've talked about it. But you got to be able to stop. One final, one final stop. It would have been a big win. That's, that would have been a huge win. The Bears have how many wins on the season? Three? I would say so. Got you pretty with the sure total, they're, right? They're three and six. They're three and six. Okay, they won the game three and five. Steelers were four and three. This was a huge game. Now, it's a long season. It's a very long season. We know anything could happen. Especially going into their bye week. Exactly. Going into the bye week. Uh, we don't know what, how long Khalil Mack is going to be out for. Yeah, I'm sure he could have been a huge contributor to shut down on that last drive maybe they get to bit uh big ben maybe not i just feel like like you said in that situation the bears are going to lose 10 times out of 10 they they just i've seen it time over time their corners like even when they did have kyle fuller they just aren't built to prevent teams from getting into the field goal range, especially in a two minute drill where plays are happening right after one another. And because the passes are so quick, it doesn't matter what type of pressure you have. It's, it's irrelevant. The pass mm -hmm. is going to be off before even the best pass rusher gets there. Yep. And he's got good weapons around him too, to be fair. Big Ben, I should say. Chase Claypool looked great. Dude's going to have a very bright future. Whatever happens with Juju, I don't think matters for Pittsburgh anymore. We'll probably take up a career in TikTok. We'll see. But I think that's going to wrap it up for the NFL. We're going to transition over to the NBA. We're still about 10 games into the league, into the season. Bulls win. They beat Brooklyn. Healy, you went to the game. I got a few a questions 20 for you. 23. I was I was sitting there today. I was thinking about how jealous I was. I was feeling feeling the jealousy. You went to the game, first game in years. You got to see Kevin Durant, James Harden, and company battle it out with our awesome Chicago Bulls team. That's still kind of knocking the rust off a little bit, but they they've been playing great. They've been playing excellent. They get a huge win. First things first. What what was it like being back at the UC? What was it like in just just walk me through? Did, was there like you got to pull out your vaccination card? Did they were they testing people? What was that like? Uh that process wasn't as bad as I thought it would. They had people standing outside just looking, you pull out your card, they look at it, they tell you, "Okay, good. Go in, go in." So it it's nothing different entering as it was before. Okay. Quickly pull it out. They take a quick glance. Boom. You're good. Get in there. Uh, stadium or the, the UC was packed. Should have been. Uh, even with it being a Monday night. Just the matchup. There's a lot of excitement. People were going crazy during the introductions. And it's felt like a playoff game. From the tip off. I, for me, I'm excited for the bench. Oh, the bench know has been stepping up, and I, I didn't think the Bulls were really going to have, like, a bench. I thought, I thought they would have a good rotation, like a good, like, five, six, seven-ish guys. But, no, they have a solid, like, bench crew as well that can take eight minutes. We saw that in this game, especially late. Yeah, Io Desamu or Desamnu, I'm saying his name wrong. I love the lack of fear that he plays as a rookie. 
he goes in there and he looks like he's been in the league for years. He puts up the three. If somebody's closing out on him, it doesn't affect his shot. He's he's got so much energy on the defensive side. He goes up for boards. Yeah, three I, offensive boards. He offensive rebounds. Going in the fourth quarter yesterday, the Bulls, I believe, were down. They're down two. And they outscored Brooklyn 17 to 42 in the fourth quarter. Durant sometimes puts that up in a quarter. That's that's huge. The seeing this this bench do what they did reminds me of the good old bench mob days. We don't have Kobe White. And actually, personally, I think they're right now, let Kobe White come back. Let him get warmed up. Let him start to put up some numbers off the bench. I feel like they're gonna trade him. Because at this point, what do we need Kobe White for? Yeah, especially with Io and Caruso being there. Yeah. And, you know, Derek Jones is providing a little bit, a little spark off the bench. He didn't have any blocks in this game, but uh, he's had a couple games with some key blocks. DeMar DeRozan is literally top five MVP, early MVP getter, if you will. Um, Levine did well. Vooch did okay but towards the fo- you know what though the, there was some minutes in the fourth quarter where he hit a mid-range couple mid-range shots or grabbed a keyboard and i'm like you know what okay this is you don't need mm-hmm. him to be excellent i'll take him putting up clint capella style numbers give yeah. me 12 13 rebounds be a body in the middle except be able to hit the long range and the mid range like you've been able to do here and there. He's still knocking the rust off. So but once Vooch, he gets it going, Vooch entering the fourth had four points. He went three of three down the stretch, ending up with eleven points. He had a big three. So it it was tough watching him early in the game though. He got blocked a couple of times. He just couldn't hit the easy shots. People were like booing him and being like, "Dude, get off! Like you are terrible right now." Which he has been. He, he's, yeah. he's not looking like himself, especially early in the games. Also, there was a point in like the third quarter or something, maybe even early fourth quarter before his big three, Lonzo passes him the ball. There's no one around him. And what does he do? He doesn't even look at the rim. He looks to pass it. Like he was out of it. And I, I believe Lonzo was like, well, what are you doing? And then yeah. I think that's when he realized, like, yeah, you know, I'm, I need to, I need to do my part. He's Just playing scared. Shot. He's playing scared. I think the, he's he's right now, in the biggest spotlight he's ever been in his career. In Orlando, a player like him is gonna put up numbers. Not saying he's mediocre. Not saying he's not good. He's obviously good. There's a reason why they gave up what they gave up for him. There's a reason why he gets paid what he gets paid. I think being in the spotlight, you're next to DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine, two of the biggest stars in the league. Lonzo Ball. Like, they traded for him, and the Chicago went nuts. And actually, he was good when they got him. For the rest of the season, he was good. There was some, you know, mediocre games. Everybody has a mediocre game. When you say mediocre, you're like, okay, he won for 12 and 10. But then the offseason, everybody forgot about Vooch. Every picture you see is the big three, DeMar, Zach Levine. Lonzo. So he had to take the back seat a little bit, and I think he's okay doing that. Mm-hmm. But at some point, considering how little of a team we have as far as in the paint, like size wise, they got to get Vooch going. They've got to get Vooch going. My thing about Brooklyn is without Kyrie, Kevin Durant has himself another. OKC team. He has another good player on his team, and that's it. OKC, I don't even know who they had at one point. It was him and Russ, and I don't even know who was there at the time. Was Luke Rittenauer there? Was Vladimir Radmanovic? I don't even know who was there at the time. But this is literally that team. Lamarcus Aldridge is okay for his He was age. a bucket yesterday. He was hitting he everything. Was good. He was good. LaMarcus Aldridge actually provided a lot off the bench for them. Blake Griffin, two points. Bruce Brown, zero. Joe Harris. Joe Harris did okay, considering only shot the ball seven times. 
Durant was to me look great. Durant is gonna look great night in, night out. I'm just not so sure that what I said about Brooklyn being one two, one two three even is gonna hold up. I don't I don't know who else needs to step up unless Aldridge can do this every night. James Harden's not getting his fouls. He's putting up good numbers. Eight eight boards, five assists yesterday. Turned the ball over four times. Curious to know how many points the Bulls scored off that. Knowing how good of a fast break team they are, probably eight points. But I think the bigger picture here is the Bulls. I think that is the bigger picture. You have the Bulls right now. They are... Seven and three. Seven and three. With two losses coming against Philly. Should have split that, but they didn't. Joel Embiid just has their number. And that's okay. In a series, I would take Chicago. Philly's playing good. They're playing without Joel Embiid tonight. They're playing without Tobias Harris and Seth Curry against Milwaukee. And I know Milwaukee's missing Chris Middleton, but Drew Holiday's been back. This is third or fourth game back. Portis is back. Some of these key guys, Grayson Allen's looking good. And Philadelphia is putting up points. They did give up in the second half. Milwaukee is running away with the uh, victory it's starting to look like. They're up seven with a minute 30. But the first three quarters, the Sixers look good. Tyrese Maxey puts up a career high, I think. He has 31 points. Shake Milton puts up 20. These are guards last year. You're like, eh, one of them will be okay. They're both looking good. Drummond, doing Drummond things, 19 rebounds. He had 25 rebounds yesterday in his game. I think that uh, I think the Sixers are okay, and I think it's okay for the Bulls to lose to a team like that that's competing with every team in the East right now. Mm -hmm. I I just hope they don't get their series swept. I do have hope. I want to go back to the bench talk, and before I get into that, before I went to the game yesterday, I told my friend I went along with. I was like, I will take fifty points from Kevin Durant and a Bulls W. Yeah, Katie well, yeah. dropped 38, and the Bulls won. I couldn't have had a better night. But the Bulls bench started the fourth quarter. It was Io, Caruso, DeRozan, Jones, and Tony Bradley. Tony Bradley had three offensive boards as well. And Kevin Durant, James Harden, they came on the floor a couple minutes before the Bulls starters. What I said is if the Bulls could get like a seven, eight point lead when the starters come in, this game's over. They got up to a nine point lead. The starters came in and they just blew the Nets out of the water. Lonzo hit a three. DeRozan hit a three. Booch hit a three. The Bulls could not. Io hit a three. The Bulls could not miss in the fourth quarter. It was fun watching that whole fourth quarter. Those corner threes were lighting up. And even seeing who else put up, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really sold on Caruso. It was one thing in the first couple of games. It was one thing seeing his energy. Couple no look dimes, the steals. But the fact every time he checks in, his energy is at a hundred, and he's so locked in. His IQ is through the roof. You could tell. I don't know if I'm not saying mm -hmm. LeBron taught him how to utilize and be basketball smart, but playing with that Lakers team has done something to him, and that's why he got paid what he got paid. He plucked James Harden twice, like while he was trying to dribble it past like the half court. Yeah. And I think the second time he actually got the steal. Yeah, he had two steals in the game. I mean, that's that's gonna be on every night. He's doing it. And you're talking, this dude only played 23 minutes. There's been a few games where he's played over 30 minutes. But it was, it was a very close game. So, of course, the bench, some of the bench guys don't play as many minutes in these close games, especially in a big game against Brooklyn. But he's putting in very efficient minutes. And Tony Bradley, you said it right there, had three huge offensive rebounds. He had eight on the, in the game. This is the Tony. This is what we need. You pay Tony Bradley to go in and do the dirty work. Grab those boards. It's almost like Andre Drummond with Philly when Embiid's healthy. Drummond just goes in, plays 15, 20 minutes, and grabs 10 boards. That's just what he's there for. 
if the Bulls can continuously get that from a couple of those guys off the bench and they have their little bench mob, they're going to be, they, they will stay top three. They will stay top three. It was fun last night with Io. Since we, if you are listening and aren't a Bulls fan, he's from Chicago. The place, he's becoming like a fan favorite. The place went nuts with him yesterday. Anything he did, he was putting up points. He was, the place was so loud. And also, after the game was over, he played, he entered the game again in garbage time minutes. The dude, we're up 20 plus points and off the inbounds pass, he's pressing. He gets a steal, forces a turnover, and the whole place is just going crazy. He also had an and one play in the fourth quarter. And even like the, the place gave him a standing O and Zach Levine was like a part of it too while he was on the court. Billy Donovan says he has like the it factor. And like that's like his personality, and he needs to like take advantage of it. He's almost like a killer, and I don't know if it's the motive, the fact that he's from Chicago playing in his hometown because it's not easy. The last person that we had from Chicago that had the it factor that was a killer was Derrick Rose. I feel like there is a sense of motivation there, and he's utilizing it. Fun fact about that game: plus minus, nobody on Brooklyn. Well. Petty Mills is plus 10 on, on Brooklyn. Paul Millsap, I'm not counting his. He only played six minutes. The Bulls, pretty much everybody was positive. But Io had the highest plus minus. He was plus 22 in the game. DeRozan, plus 13 along with Ball and Green. Vucevic, plus 10 with Levine. Io, I would say early, early on, so far has an it factor playing without fear is the biggest thing you get not hesitate like Vucevic hesitating a wide open three and he's looking to pass Io doesn't do that Io understands the objective do you see his floater he had as like the buzzer hit in one of the plays Mm -mm. so I'll send you the clip uh I should have it Yes, it, it's this one. I'm going to send you the clip on Discord right now. The guy gets the ball with like three seconds to go. He does a behind-the-back dribble, gets through a couple guys, and just puts it up with like not even a second left and just drains it. I was like, oh, my God. Like I, I thought we were going to get a shot clock violation or just a terrible shot. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was an I. Oh, the cross, the behind the yeah. back move. Yeah. He's quick. He's quick. He's got a lot of energy. He, he's going to be huge. And I know I said what I said about Kobe White. I think Kobe White will still provide some much needed effort off the bench. Having our, our bench mixed in with our start, if you want Levine to, to, Get a few minutes rest, bring in Caruso, bring in Io. If you want DeRozan, probably got to bring in Io. Actually, either or could probably end up playing the two or the three, even though ideally you don't want those guys playing the three. Mm -hmm. We're just a short team, but yeah, last very excited. Night, last night, during when the starters came on for that big stretch in the fourth, it was Lonzo, Io, Levine, DeRozan, and Vooch, which was great because DeRozan played a lot. He also played the early fourth. So they sat him from like minute seven to like clock. Mm -hmm. That's a scary team in transition. I'll tell you that. Defensively, it is, it can be a problem, but mm -hmm. as long as everybody, everybody, everybody plays their part and Vooch really, I mean, Vooch has it. He's, he is an all star for a reason. He'll get it going. Yeah. And, the Nets, if it does come down to the playoffs, a little early here, but I feel like the Nets are a very good team to match up with for what the Bulls are. Because we saw yeah. Durant drop a bunch of points, but due to the lack of size the Bulls have, the Nets don't have anyone big. 
Durant's the tallest person like on their team. Claxton, I didn't see him play. I don't I don't know if he's hurt at the moment, but or in protocols. But like the the Nets don't really have big guys compared to maybe Joel Embiid or even the Bucks with Giannis. Yeah, besides Durant, Durant's playing pretty well. He's grabbing boards too. He's, yeah, he's, he's seven he's, feet. And you have Blake yeah. Griffin, who's like six nine. But he's always been a wing player. He's always been a six, seven rebound type guy. He knows he understands his role now. They the Nets in a series are gonna be scary simply because they have Kevin Durant, they have James Harden. We don't know what's gonna happen with Kyrie, probably won't see him this year, which is whatever. In a series, though, I don't see the Nets beating any of the top three teams right now. Miami's good. They're out there ready to box Jokic and and the whole Nuggets team and Jokic's brothers. And you have, obviously, who knows what's going to happen with Boston and the trade rumors there. Ben Simmons, is he going to go to Boston? Is he not? We're going to see what happens. Are they going to give up Marcus Smart? (laughs) Jalen Brown apparently would be, have to, is a must. Which, and that's just not going to happen. Somebody mentioned it. Why stick with something that hasn't been working? The duo that is of also true. and Brown has not been working. It's been working worse. enough. Yeah. And it has been getting worse. Jason Tatum, to me, has solidified himself, and I think he's at that point right now where he's a superstar. I don't think there's no any point in trying to get Jalen Brown to try to have this duo superstar, have Jason Tatum take over every single game. And if you can add Ben Simmons while keeping hopefully some of the other guys around, I think it could help bring a different dimension to this Celtics team versus any given night, Jason Tatum drops 40, any given night, Jalen Brown drops 40. But these guys are defensive liabilities. Not saying it's going to happen, but that is a rumor. But as far as the top three, we're talking Philadelphia, Miami, Chicago. I'm not looking at Washington, not looking at Cleveland right now. Cleveland just lost Colin Sexton, torn MCL. I could be wrong. He's got to be off for a little bit. Torn meniscus. Meniscus, yes. So... We'll see what ends up happening. I do feel like Washington and Cleveland will drop off. It's early on. They're not going to make the playoffs. But even New York would give Brooklyn a tough time in the playoffs. So I I need to see more from Brooklyn. I need to see more, not from Durant. I need the other guys to stay. I need I need to see something from Harden. I, what happened to Harden? Yeah, he's not getting his fouls, but this dude used to be a killer. This used to, dude used to drop seven threes in a game like it was nothing. Mm-hmm. And he he still can. There's you. There's no way you're not going to tell me he can't. He and dropped, I know it's very early. He dropped thirty eight and eight on you like it was nothing. Yeah, and granted, he would get away with a lot of stuff. Guys would have to keep hands off. It's a different game this year. I think he'll. I think he'll adjust. I think he'll adjust. He's just again. It's like one of those things. He's knocking the rust off. New rule changes. New basketball. Let him get. Let him get in the mid season form. And we're going to be like okay. Nets are on a 10-game win streak. This is, this is going to be a scary team in the playoffs now, so it, only time will tell with that. With that being said, there's not a whole lot. Milwaukee just beat Philadelphia. Shout out to them. Steph Curry dropped 50 points yesterday. The First Lakers' woes still continue as well. Yeah, LeBron's going to be missing a little bit of time, which we assumed would happen. I didn't know if it would be this early in the season. I assume Anthony Davis to miss a stretch of games, and I'm assuming Russ to miss not a stretch, but intermittently miss a game or two here and there. Lakers, they'll they'll make the playoffs. I, I can't really say much. I, I still think they'll end up being a top-five team when they're all on the court. They are okay, Russ needs to needs to get his, his field goal percentage up. It's not good. They'll get it going, though. They'll definitely get it going. He's been terrible. But going back to Seth, or Steph, Seth, Steph Curry, 50 points, 
first 50 point game on the season out of anyone the warriors are eight and one their point differential is through the roof and they don't even have clay thompson back this At team this point... is oh my be ready and they went out and drafted james wiseman last year they probably could have drafted like lomelo ball and imagine that team right now. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Having Steph Curry to, uh, pair up with Klay Thompson, LaMelo Ball, Andrew Wiggins, maybe. I don't know. I don't really, I'm not the biggest fan of him. He's, he's actually stepping it up this year. Draymond Green has been awesome. He's still the Draymond Green. You expect to push almost a triple-double. I uh, This team's scary. Jordan Poole is the next man up we're going to be we're going to be talking about jordan Poole for a while this dude had against the hornets speaking of lamello he had shot 11 to 21 7 of 16 from three 31 points after that he dropped 26 after that he dropped 25 16 in his last game against atlanta jordan Poole is on fire in his third year He's got 18.2 career high for scoring. Three-point percentage is 45%. This whole team's shooting well. Steph Curry started off hot. He's getting hotter. And the rest of the guys are just filling in. And the defense is great. The defense is good. Draymond Green is probably the best leader on any team right now. Especially due to the fact that he's mic'd up. He's saying some good stuff. I'm sure he's like that without having the mic on. Definitely going to be a good team in the playoffs throughout the season to watch. I didn't think they'd be number one this early. I didn't think they would even be top four, to be honest. I knew they'd be close, but. Did, you, Curry. did you see the the clip of Draymond talking about Steve Kerr's body language? Mm-mm, I did not. So this is another great reason why the Warriors work and why they have success is due to the relationships of the players and also the coach. So I don't know if it was just Draymond in general, but he was talking about one game. They started off, they ended up winning this game, but they started off with just a bunch of turn. And uh, Draymond noticed like Steve Kurt's head like went down every single time. His body language, he was like, geez, after every single turnover. So during like one of the timeouts, Draymond went up to him and was like, Coach, you, you got to have better body language, man. Like, when we do bad, we, like, look over and we get petrified of, like, what's happening. Like, you got to change up how you look with, uh, like, the turnovers. He was like, all right. Like, I didn't even notice I was doing that and whatnot. And he made sure, like, it, like, clicked with him. Didn't really do that on turnovers. And they ended up winning the game and played well their the remainder of the stretch. And like as a player, especially when you see a coach, I remember playing in high school and whatnot. You make one bad mistake, you immediately look over to the sideline and you are like, is he getting someone up to replace me? <laughs> like you are scared. Mm -hmm. And that could change some things on the court. Uh, not the same team, but like Vooch. Let's say a guy's not shooting well, he gets the ball, ends up like Vooch, and instead of just shooting it, what goes through his head is like, if I miss this, I'm going to the bench. And then he looks to pass. You get people to play a little more scared and not make certain passes because they're worried about turning it over. And turnovers are part of basketball. They're going to happen. You just got to minimize them. Yeah, I think that's been a huge part for Draymond Green, too. He's been stepping in as that that player as that role player for this younger team, minus Steph Curry, obviously. Um, I saw a lot of it, him mic'd up was incredible. I was like, I like him as a bad, like, I really like him, what he's telling these guys. James Wiseman, a couple times, he's passing up, you know, open shots or he's, you know, mid-range, whatever, and he's going up to him, and he's like, oh, you missed? He's like, didn't, he's like, we all missed. I'm, uh, he missed, I missed, you missed, and guess what? We still play the game. I want you to go back out there and do you. Letting them know, like, hey, you might have missed two or three in a row, but that's not you. Like, it happens. Like, we all 
nobody's perfect. He's like, nobody's perfect. And that's literally what he said. Nobody's perfect in this game. And in my head, I'm like, that is the most motivated. And, and sometimes as, you're right. As the coach, you do look to the sideline. But it's great that Draymond Green is being that guy to kind of keep these guys, keep the head up, right? That, 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 that gift that's always just, hey, when, when your head's down, the college basketball player, who, who was that? Uh, Moses Brown, what, uh, what was the player from UCLA? I don't I know. remember. Yeah, and he, his head was down. He put his head up. Keep your head up. You always got to keep your head up because at the end of the day, you're going to lose games. You're going to turn the ball over. You're going to miss shots. And Draymond Green is there reminding them, hey, you're good. You're a good player, but it's okay to do, you know, to have a bad play here and there. So shout out to Draymond Green for being a good leader. He's going to be a fantastic coach when he's playing. Oh, Desert. yeah. I hope oh, to yeah. see him as like an NBA coach. He will be. He will be for sure. If we're seeing, if we're seeing Steve Nash and some of these other guys who obviously have a good basketball IQ, Draymond has that IQ, except he's got a personality to go with it. He's not afraid he to motivate. Tell you. He's not afraid to tell. He's he's motivated. He can motivate these guys, and he'll give the refs some lit, and it's gonna be fun to watch. Obviously, we still got some years before that. They got another title to win. With that, though. I believe that's going to be the end of this week's podcast. Uh, as always, make sure to follow, subscribe at SR Only Pod, SR Only Pod on Twitter and Instagram. For all our personal pages, mine is at the Healy Six. I am my goose with four O's. Make sure you hit that follow button. Follow us on everything you can. Let's talk trash. Tell me I'm wrong, but back it up. I'm going to dog you otherwise. Anyways, make sure you guys tune in. Hit that download button. We will see you next week.